Easter means so much at our house, even more than Christmas. And so I wanted to give you guys as many ways to celebrate Easter as possible. So I thought I'd make this video and give you a glimpse into a little bit of my process and how I actually make my big watercolor paintings. I'm not going fully in depth. I want even beginners to be able to try this, but I am showing you a little bit about how I layer and then also about how I do my line work. One thing I really want you guys to remember is that it does not need to look like mine. This is your very own painting. I want you to do your best and it's gonna be fine. Everyone's is going to look different. We're not going for perfect here. We're going for progress. I wanted to give you guys a simple supply list that was not going to be too expensive. So what you need is a cup with water in it. This is my lining paintbrush, very skinny, very thin bristles here. I really like flat brushes, so I've got a medium one here and a larger one. And this is a round brush. If you just have these four brushes, you should be good to go. The set that I recommend down below will last you for a long time, and it's pretty cheap also, but you could use some other kinds of brushes that you find at a store as well. I also recommend getting a, some kind of a palette that will separate your paints out for you. You don't have to have one, you can use a plate, just try to be careful that your colors don't touch. And then a paper towel to blot your colors on so that they also don't mix in the water or mix when you're switching from color to color. And here are the different paints that I used in this painting. I have my black, I have my Viridian, which is my green, my cadmium red, I have burnt sienna, which is this lighter brown, burnt umber, which is this darker brown, I have cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, which is a yellow with a little bit of brown in it, Prussian blue is a dark blue, and then also ultramarine blue, which is kind of our regular ocean or sky blue. This is a white gouache, which you will need to buy separately, and it is so worth it. This black colored pencil you might be able to find around the house. It is also optional, and I show you at the end how you can do it without the colored pencil. Just assuming you guys might just get the watercolors and not have the colored pencil, I do my line work normally with colored pencil, but in this painting I show you how you can do it with a paintbrush as well with that skinny lining brush. The other material that we're using is this watercolor paper and also this painter's tape, and you should use better more expensive painter's tape than I used here. I end up paying the price for it at the end. So as we're drawing this, I want you to think of how we're starting it as if I'm creating the skeleton bones of the tree trunk. I'm gonna be making thicker lines around these first lines in just a second, but right now it's kind of a messy tree trunk. It's not pretty. There's some lumps, some organic lines, and we're going up we're going to be separating out into branches. It's going to come in this arched shape coming over to the side at the end of it. And so it's not your cookie cutter sort of cartoon tree. This, this tree has, has personality. It really has bones. So we're just drawing the basic structure of some of the main branches and trunks coming out of this tree. And we're going to come and thicken up these lines a little bit later. See, this branch is just going its own direction completely, and we're gonna create one that's coming up, going the opposite direction as well. I slowed this part of the video down just because I wanted you to get an idea of how long this process actually takes. I couldn't slow all of it down because I didn't have space on my phone. And so what you can do is you can just pause your video. You can also play it if you look at the settings on this video. You can play it at a slower speed if that will help you. Please feel free to do that. Feel free to pause to back up the video. Or, you know, if you are a pro at this, you know, feel free to speed up the video as well. But as we're creating this tree, I want you to keep in mind there are no just fully straight lines. They're all, they all have a little bit of personality to them. There's bumps. They're what we call organic lines. There's curves. And this tells us that this is a real tree. 
because real trees don't actually look like cartoons and straight lines and all that. They look like they grew and they grew in a unique and original way. So I'm fixing this line here with my eraser. I wanted to show you guys that. Real artists do make mistakes. It's okay. Just like you're going to make mistakes too. It's all good. Something normal about trees is that they typically go from thick at the bottom to thin on the top. And there are some exceptions, some bulges and tree branches. But as we're going, these tree branches are getting thinner and they're also going to be branching out more like veins. So now we're going to start to draw some of the leaves and what we're doing basically is just creating this cloudy sort of bumpy structure that comes down in this arch to the left side. We're giving it a little bit of dimension here with these lines. Feel free to pause if you need to. This is an acacia tree and these grow in Israel. Now we're drawing this cylinder shape here and this is gonna be the stone that was rolled in front of the tomb. I want you to think of this as sort of a smushed arch and that's gonna be the opening of our tomb. And here coming around the side is the start of our sort of mountain or hill. And down here is gonna be this brook, this water running through. And so this is the edge of the land that I'm drawing here and we'll come in and do the water later. Here I slowed this down to show you, I'm trying to already draw in some of the texture that we're going to be painting in later on this stone. And on this mountain, we're gonna have similar structure. And on this mountain, we're gonna have similar texture. So drawing these lines in a diagonal on this front side of the stone makes it kind of seem like it's going away, like it's in the distance and getting further away on the left side of the stone. And then here on the side, these lines are showing that this side of the stone is in a completely different plane. So we're just gonna create these lines to give us an idea that this is rock and we're gonna come back in with paint to show that later. And here I'm following the line, this sort of arch line to show the edge of this hill. Here's more of my texture lines for the mountain. coming right down into the grave. Now down here, I did want to create some little grass shrubs to kind of break up the ground a little bit, make it a little bit more interesting. So I drew these little sections of shrubs and one of them was actually out of the camera shot. So you'll see it in the next one. Something to remember with these is that it's almost like hair um, or just, just these little sprigs that are coming up and they're coming up irregularly. They're uneven. You want them to be different lengths and if they can go in different directions, unless it would make sense that gravity is pulling them down all in one direction, you want to do that as well. So here we're gonna start with our paint, we're ready. And what we do first is we have ultramarine blue that's diluted and then we're gonna allow this color to diffuse into lighter blue by adding some water beneath it. And we're also gonna begin to define the water down here. And if you look at the water, it's almost as if there are these sort of rounded diamonds these sections, you could think of them as fish without fins or tails. And those sections were leaving white here and the rest were painting blue. Now this white area, if as long as you have your gouache, it won't be the only white that we have. In watercolor, it's very important to pay attention to keeping your whites free from color. So this is very important right here. Next, we're gonna be diluting our black to make gray. And so all that you do to do that is you just add some water to it. And now you're gonna be ready to add this color to the side of this hill. And on this hill, we're just gonna start by painting the whole thing this gray color. And finally, what we're gonna do here in this first section is we're gonna be painting this line of purple on the edge of the water where it would be shadowed. Next, we come in with yellow ochre and we paint every part of the ground 
that's showing, not the part behind the tree leaves. And now I'm going to come in and use that same diluted black color, that gray, and I'm going to paint the stone that was rolled away in front of the tomb. And inside the tomb, I'm using the same black color, but I'm using more paint in my water to paint ratio. So it is closer to black here. And I'm just going to paint this inside, this skinny arched shape, and that's going to be the dark inside of the tomb. Be careful not to paint the side that goes into the tomb yet. We're just painting the inside of the tomb. Now once your sky is dry enough so that it won't start to mix with other colors painted around it, what you're going to do is you're going to paint the leaves of the tree. Now the tricky thing with watercolor is the colors really build. So I know you're thinking, let's go green here, but we're not going to go green first. First, we're going to go yellow. Let's all do this cadmium yellow. And what we're doing is we're painting it in the brightest parts of the tree. And this is a picture of a sunrise. So the light is coming from the other side of the tree and it's coming from beneath the tree. So that's gonna give us some really interesting colors here. So just follow the lines that I make and you'll be totally fine. If we have this yellow under the green, this is gonna make the green here sort of really pop. Now what we're gonna do is come in with this darker gray color and we're gonna define some of those lines that we already created in our hillside and also on the stone. And this is gonna give us some guidelines for in the future so that we know we want to preserve these lines in these places to show texture. Now I'm coming in with burnt umber and defining some shadows on the ground here. And you can just follow the shadows that I'm making. Remember, this is an edge that's going off into the water, so that's why this whole area right here is shadowed. And here we're going to use the same color, but without yellow under it, and we're going to start to create some depth in this tree. Let's add some blue to the sky. Now with this gray color, I'm coming in and defining those shadows. That's where I'm going to define the color here. And the other parts of the tree for now, I'm just going to leave totally white because that's the place that the sun would be hitting is lower so from the bottom and to the left. I'm also coming in with this ultramarine blue to create more of a shadow on this hill structure as well as on the stone in front of it. So here we're deepening the shadow with some more burnt umber. Now let's add some black to the tomb and texture on the hill. What we're doing now with a dappling motion is we're using this sort of sap green color. Now my paint set didn't come with that and so I mixed it by mixing cadmium yellow and viridian green. But your paint set may have a light green color like this, which I do recommend using a light green even if you have a sort of dark viridian. I know it's irritating to mix it. Just go for it anyway. You're gonna love the effect that it creates at the end. But I want you to look at my motion with my paintbrush here. It's sort of like I'm dabbing and I'm also changing the direction of my dabbing to make it look a little bit more random, a little bit less painted and more natural. And it's creating these rectangles in the tree. These little dappled spaces of white that I'm leaving are going to help to create the sense of depth and irregularity in the leaves. On this tree trunk, I add browns, I add blues, I add grays, and I add even at the end a little bit of green color on this to just make it look like a full rich color and that it belongs in its surroundings. And here I forgot to record, so I'm just going back over what I just did. And what I'm doing is creating this sort of triangle shape coming out over the water of more of this same color of light green. 
And I want you to notice that I'm not going over the whites that I have. I'm preserving the whites except for maybe in a few areas I decided to go in with some color. But what would be best is just to save them all because this white shining color is gonna create the contrast that shows us this is water. Here I'm coming in with just some of that lighter brown burnt sienna and I'm defining the shadow more of the tree. I wanted it to stand out as separate from the hill behind it. And with just a simple viridian green, no yellow underneath it, we are going to be coloring these shrubs that are coming up from the ground. So with ultramarine blue a little bit darker this time, we're going to be defining again the shape of these sort of smushed diamonds in the water, defining where these waves are happening, where they're coming from. And then over here, we're beginning to paint the sun in the sunrise. And what it's going to look like is almost a mirror image of the top of the painting with the blue, except we're doing it in yellow with the cadmium yellow, that bright yellow. We're going to go thicker yellow at the bottom. And then we're going to begin to use thinner color going up from there. Now with more black here, I come in and darken the shadow of inside the tomb. And here I'm bringing in some purple for the shadowing of this side of the doorway going into the tomb, and then also on the side of the stone. I'm even darkening these two shadows on the ground with this purple color. And here we're coming in with just regular viridian, not this sort of light sap green color we created, but just viridian. And we're going to create this same dappled technique, but we're going to concentrate mostly in the middle of this arch, in the middle of these leaves, because that would be probably the darkest green in the tree would be this middle section because it's not being touched by the light coming from the side or from underneath. And again, you know, the leaves are going in different directions, or at least that's how we want it to seem. With more ultramarine, we're actually going to come and shade over the bottom right sides of those diamonds that we made. Because as I was painting, I was realizing that the sun would be hitting it on that front side, but not on the back side. And if it's dry enough, you can start to, with your Prussian blue, your dark blue, come in and really define those shadows of the separation of those diamonds with that dark blue. You can do that part now, or you can come back a little bit later and do the next part of it until the ultramarine blue is dry on your waves because you don't want your color mixing together. That could mess things up a little bit. Now with some burnt umber, I'm gonna be shading these little shrubs here and the shadows you'll be able to see are just gonna be on the right side. The rest, we're leaving this green color. And then I'm coming in with some ultramarine blue to paint more of a shadow on this hill structure behind. Next, put some purple on the shadows on the ground. And then I am using Prussian blue to really define the branches here and the shapes of them. And you'll notice that I start to carry the lines of the branches up into the leaves of the tree more, just like branches really would go up into the leaves. Now let's put some red on the ground. Now add some yellow ochre on the left side of the hill. And with more of this purple color, I'm using that same dappling effect to create shadows within the leaves of the tree. And look at this that we're doing here. We're changing the shape of the light we're having a little bit of fun with it. So we're going in and we're gonna be creating these darker shadows on the shadowed side of the wave. And now I'm also coming in with more gray on the mountainside. Next, what we're doing is with our very thin lining brush, we are going to be lining the tree. Now you can do this with your black and we're just very carefully lining this tree, you just have to be patient and you have to be very gentle with the brush and make sure that you don't have too much 
color on it or too much water or it will drip but if it does drip and you make a mess you just use a nice clean paper towel and you wipe it away and then you start over when it's dry again trust me on this one first we'll add red on the hillside and over in all these places we're just darkening the shadow just a little bit you can see here there's some really darker contrast now that we're adding Let's put some purple in the water. Let's add yellow to the leaves in the reflection in the water. And over in all these places, we're just darkening the shadow just a little bit. I slowed the video down here so you can see how I do the lining. I'm just going through with this black ivory. Normally this would be with a pencil or with a nice quality ink pen. But here we're just defining the shape of things. I like to do that in my paintings. You could actually leave this painting without that being done, but I think it just adds a sort of a sharpness and, and also something like a comfort. It just feels more homey to me when I do things like this. Now I'm going to start defining the shape of the leaves. If you can't see the shape of your pencil that you drew underneath it before, that's okay because I bet that your paint in some places went over those pencil lines. And so we're going to have this paint follow the lines of the new leaf lines that your paint created. So we're just creating these, again, gentle, organic, curved shapes that have a lot of different changes of direction to make it look like they are bunches of leaves. A lot of artists make the mistake of trying to define every single leaf. And you can do this in realistic artwork. It just will take quite a bit of time. And it's a totally different look than the one that we're going for today. When you're done with the leaves, we're also going to come in and define the side of the tomb. We're going to define even the shrubs. And we're also going to end up defining the side of the hill behind so that we can really tell where does this hill begin and end. with more of this black diluted to gray, of course, and also with some of the purple in a little bit, we're gonna be darkening these shadows here, really defining where is the light touching and where is it not touching. Now, next we're gonna be painting some light colors. And so what I wanted to do is refresh the water in my water cup, it was getting a little too cloudy. So I just dumped it out and rinsed out the brushes and got some more water. So I'm coming in with the same cadmium yellow that we use to make the sunlight and I'm darkening the sunlight. And when I say darkening, I'm making it more vibrant. It's a clean cadmium yellow color, so it's not getting dark, but it is getting more vibrant. And then as if the sunlight were kissing the different parts of this painting that are closer to it, I'm going to be adding a little bit of cadmium yellow on those left sides of things. So I'm adding some yellow on the left side of this mountain, this hill, and I'm also going to add some on this stone here and on the ground that is closer to the sunrise. I also add just a touch more yellow to the leaves. And here you'll see that I'm going back and with this black, definitely black this time, lining with paint the tree and 
you could have done that before or now, but it just really helps to define things and where they are. Then even more shadow inside the tomb. But here is when we're going to bring in the gouache. I told you guys about that white tube of paint I told you to get. And what you're going to do with this is you're going to be adding more whites into the water and it's going to create really beautiful effects. And so watch how I create lines that go over the different waves, connect them, and even cover up some of the color that we had put before. It's okay to do that here, you guys. We're having fun. We're creating some beautiful flowing lines that are going to really make this look like it's alive and that it has motion. I also add some white even to the tree because there were some whites that I went over too soon when I was painting in some of the green color. I don't know if you caught it because it was so quick, but I also add some white onto the stone and onto the hill to make it look like at this point, this is where the sun is hitting it. And it does create this sort of glowing effect here. I signed my signature a little bit before I finished here. And here I come in with some blacks to really define some of those shadows in the ocean. And I'm creating some interesting lines here. And with some more black and brown and blue, I'm just deepening that shadow a little bit more on the side of the stone here, making sure that I have my lines and my colors looking right. When it's all dry, you'll go in and you'll remove the tape very carefully pulling away from your painting. I make a whole video about this. The link's up above right now if you want to watch it. Don't forget to tag me on social media or email me your finished paintings. I would love to see what you've created. I would love to cheer you on. And if you want to come on future creative adventures with us, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. Be so blessed. <laughs>